No one should be prosecuted for the outcomes of their pregnancies, whether it is a miscarriage, stillbirth, or an abortion. Immigrant children are caged apart from their families. Trans children are turned into political fodder. Young students are murdered in their schools. And black and brown parents live in anxiety about the day their children encounter the police. These issues are not separate from abortion. They are the realities we consider when weighing whether we want to bring another life into this country. The bans and restrictions are designed to shame us and make abortion hard or impossible to access. These situations are tragic, not only because people must remain pregnant longer than they want to be, often while caring for the children they already have, but because the very leaders who force them to do so also block child tax credits, the Medicaid expansion, and refuse to engage in conversations about paid parental or sick leave or affordable health care and affordable child care or even create a national healthcare system. That is what reproductive justice is all about. The ability for all of us, especially people of color, to be able to decide if, when, and how to grow our families, and to be able to do so free from state-sanctioned coercion, oppression, and violence. Despite the abortion bans, many people are and will still get abortions, but far from home and at great expense. I care for them regularly. I am one of the many thousands of volunteers with local abortion funds who receives them into our cars, our homes, and communities. This community care is being criminalized, not because it is wrong, but because anti-abortion legislators think it's a good policy to criminalize Americans showing up for each other. No one should be prosecuted for the outcomes of their pregnancies, whether it is a miscarriage, stillbirth, or an abortion. Neither should the providers or helpers who care for us. One in four of us will have an abortion in our lives. Everyone loves someone who has abortions. Ask yourself, who do you love that you'd be willing to lock up simply because they had abortions? Like many of your constituents and loved ones, I had an abortion. It was one of the best decisions of my life, period. I feel so lucky that when I was 19, my abortion care network clinic was 10 minutes from my home and an Orthodox Jewish nurse held my hand and she did so because her faith called her to. But that almost wasn't my story. Shortly before my appointment, I didn't know if I could hold on. I didn't think I could be pregnant for another moment. I hoped it would all go away. And when it didn't, every day I considered throwing myself down the stairs as I had seen in movies and in history books. One night, I drank an unsafe amount of alcohol, believing it would cause a miscarriage. It didn't. Thankfully, I went to my appointment and received my abortion. That was when it was legal in every state. Now it is not, and I know some will try the methods that I did, and I want them to know that there are safe methods to self-managing their abortions, according to the World Health Organization. It is one mifepristone pill followed by four misoprostol pills dissolved under the tongue 24 to 48 hours later, or a series of 12 misoprostol pills, four at a time, dissolved under the tongue every three hours. There's no way to test it in the bloodstream, and a person doesn't need to tell the police what they took. I share that to exercise my right to free speech because there are organizations and legislators who want to make what I just said a crime. Give us back our abortions at any time and for any reason, anywhere in this country. Thank you.